You're in charge of designing a blimp that'll move at 15 miles an hour through the air. And to decide on what engines to use, you need to be able to predict the drag force on the full-scale blimp. And to do so, you place a scale model that's nine times smaller than the full blimp in a moving water channel in the laboratory. And then you measure the force of drag on that blimp. First off, we need to determine the water velocity needed to ensure that flow characteristics are the same between the model blimp and the full-scale blimp. And if you do the dimensional analysis on this problem, you'll find that there are only two pi terms, the Reynolds number and the coefficient of drag. So in this case, if the Reynolds number for the model is equal to the Reynolds number of the prototype, then the coefficient of drag for the model would equal the coefficient of drag for the prototype. So if the Reynolds number are the same, even though this full-scale blimp is in air, in this model blimp it's nine times smaller and it's flowing through water, if we get the Reynolds number the same, the flow characteristics around these blimps will be exactly the same. So let's expand this out. Here's a density, velocity, and length scale for the model and the viscosity. So in this case it would be the density of water, the viscosity of water, and the velocity of the water that we're interested in. And here the Reynolds number for the prototype, the density of air, the viscosity of air, the length of the full-size blimp, and the velocity at which it's flying, which is 15 miles an hour. So let's rearrange this equation and figure out the velocity of the water we need to flow the model through. In rearranging it, we find that it's the velocity of the prototype times the ratio of viscosities, ratio of the densities, and the ratio of the length scales. And if I plug in numbers, the full-size blimp will travel at 15 miles an hour. Here's the viscosity of water, so the viscosity of the model case, and the viscosity of the air is this value. Here's the density of air and the density of water. And here's the length scale, the length of the prototype divided by the length of the model. I come up with a value of 6.75 miles per hour. And this is the speed that we'd need to have water moving over the model blimp to, to ensure uh, flow characteristics that are similar between the model and the full size. That'll ensure that the coefficient of drag for the model is the same as the coefficient of drag for the prototype. So you ran the experiment and we've measured a value of 700 pounds is the drag force on the model. And using that, let's estimate the drag on the prototype and the power of the engines needed to move the blimp through the air. And to do that, we'll use a coefficient of drag. And here's how the coefficient of drag relates to the drag force. So if we've maintained the same Reynolds number, the coefficient of drag for the model is equal to the coefficient of drag for the prototype. What I'm going to do, I'll solve for the coefficient of drag for both the model and the prototype, and I'll equate those two. And this is the rearranged form of it. Here on the left is the force of drag on the model, which we'll measure in the laboratory. And similarly for the prototype, so the important thing to recognize, because we've maintained similitude, the Reynolds numbers are the same. That means the coefficient of drag of both the model and the prototype are the same, and they cancel out. So let's calculate the force of drag on the prototype by rearranging. So we just need the ratio of the densities, the ratio of the two velocities, which we now know, and the ratios of the length scale times the force of drag acting on the model. So I'll plug numbers into this. So the actual drag on the prototype is 280 pounds. And it may seem strange because we're talking about something that's nine times bigger, and the drag force we just found is, you know, about half or less than half that of the prototype. But also consider that the blimp is flowing through air instead of water. It's an inviscid fluid that's, uh, the density is a thousand times less. So in reality, even though it's nine times bigger, the drag force is actually less. But on a laboratory scale, it would be easier to handle something that's nine times smaller, and it would be easier to make more sophisticated measurements in the laboratory. And finally, the power needed is the drag force on the prototype times its velocity. So the drag force, we estimate, is 280 pounds, and its speed is 15 miles an hour. And if we use some conversion factors, so we've got miles an hour cross out, we've got foot-pounds per second, which is dimensions of power, and here's the conversion, we can calculate it in horsepower, in which you calculate the power needed by the blimp's engines is 11 horsepower.